Hi, you've clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Wednesday. Over here in the Atlantic, we have a fairly active situation going on for late July here. We've got Tropical Storm Brett still trying to pull off some convection over here southeast of North Carolina as it slowly moves off to the northeast here. Still not, still trying to stay together even though he is being sheared and dry air is filtering in from the north. He's still holding his own, which is impressive. This tiny little storm has been doing a lot of work over the last few days trying to maintain itself in its low level circulation is still very well defined but nevertheless it will be no threat as it moves off to the northeast here may bring a few passing showers skirting Bermuda but will not be too much of an issue at all the other thing which I noticed on the models a few days ago but neglected to mention because I thought the NHC wouldn't care is this little feature up here this is the competing circulation that I had mentioned when Brett was down here remember I mentioned that competing circulation to the northeast that's what this is over here and this has actually become very well defined and the NHC has now drawn over over it with a red crayon. This is Invest 99L. This has got a very well-defined low-level circulation at the end of the loop here, and this almost looks better than Brett now. It is under a large-scale westerly to southwesterly flow aloft, which means that it is getting sheared. As you can see, the west side of the circulation has no convection. However, it is tropical. And in all honesty, this could have been labeled a tropical depression as early as yesterday afternoon if the NHC actually wanted to. But what will determine its fate in terms of classification will be whether it can hold together long enough through tonight or tomorrow morning uh, to see if the NHC will actually want to name it based on consistency. But you could technically name this right now. It's another war of terminology and classification requirements. But... We will see how it goes. We may get Tropical Depression 3 or even Tropical Storm Cindy out of this, and it will be going off to sea also and not affecting anybody except ships. Now going back to the big view, the other thing that we're going to be watching very closely is this very large tropical wave sitting here moving into the central Atlantic. Very large wave, very large circulation. There's not so much of a tropical wave axis with it as there is a broad circulation. There's a lot of dry air wrapped up with this, but there's also a lot of moisture. This moisture envelope here is actually very pronounced it may not look like it due to the lack of convection but there is actually a large area of moisture here and this is going to be propagating west northwest across the Atlantic towards the northeastern Caribbean over the next several days and this could be a potential problem down the road that we may have to watch because as this gets into more favorable environment farther west it may have a chance to try to wind something up what it may do is half of it may end up in the Caribbean and the northern part may end up north of the Caribbean and the northern part according to the models will be more likely to develop low pressure but we'll have to see how that goes it's going to have to consolidate either way somehow this large area of energy is going to have to consolidate into something smaller once it gets over here now if we look at the Canadian day six check out what's going on here near the southeastern Bahamas it has a low develop from the northern part of that wave moving northwest here into the southeastern Bahamas and if we look at the UK Met day six check out the same position and a low pressure with a closed isobar showing up over here and if we go to the European day six same kind of thing a little bit weaker a little bit of low pressure here you can see that little curve in the isobar right here omega shaped feature that is our wave showing up there now if we go out two days check out this trough this trough is sitting here to the north and this kind of argues for recurvature in here but the thing about this pattern is it's very fragile and of course as we're far out there's always uncertainty in the steering patterns with these things but see this trough this axis right here this is moving off to the northeast what this is doing is shaving off the Atlantic Ridge here and making it a lot flatter along the top Make making it possible for this trough to swing by with little or no resistance which means it's going to move out fairly fast so if we go out two days look what happens this trough's already gone and look at the Texas Ridge building northeastward making one of those August moves up towards New England that we talk about during this kind of a hurricane season pattern this ridge will balloon up in here at times and this can be a dangerous pattern because look what's going on we have this little area of low pressure right here and instead of recurving it's getting caught underneath this ridge and guess where it's going to go. It's going to move west. So if we go out to day 10, check out what we have. We have what the European is saying should be a tropical depression or storm along the west coast of Florida, south of a big ridge right here to the north. That kind of pattern that we've been talking about can develop at times during the peak of the hurricane season in years like this that can bring storms westward instead of recurving. And of course, there's some uncertainty with this pattern as the models will be all over the place for the next several days, and the GFS hasn't gotten fully on board with this yet. But the pattern and the timing will be key, of course. But the point is that the pattern is fragile, and this trough 
up here is not going to be around very long in the Western Atlantic to try to recurve this. So the timing would have to be perfect to get this to get into the trough before it leaves right away. Here's the European and the GFS 8 to 10 day 500 millibar height average side by side. This is the European on the left and the GFS on the right. Notice that both have the area of above normal heights over southeastern Canada and northern New England um, days 8 through 10. And notice this kink in the 500 millibar uh, ISO hips right here near Cuba during this time, showing that the area of low pressure is see, sitting in here, being seen by each of the models. Now, this overall pattern with the ridge here, a little bit of a trough over the west coast, is indicative of certain analogs. If we go over and plug that into the computer, this is the Climate Prediction Center analog list. Here's the GFS, day 8, 500 millibar height pattern. Notice what the number one analog is on top of the list here, 1980. August 6th and guess what that was here's that day 500 millibar anomalies for that day 1980 August 6th here's that pattern you can see that it is indeed an analog with the ridge over here a little bit of lower heights showing up over the western US and guess what this is down here this is Hurricane Allen and a lot of you will be familiar with this storm. It came across the northern Caribbean and ended up moving into south Texas. It was a category 4 or 5 during most of its life in this area. And it's interesting to see this on top of the analogs for the pattern that is coming up in 8 to 10 days. Now, I'm not saying that our wave out here <coughs> excuse me, is going to be anything like Allen as it comes west-northwest, but what this is telling us is that this kind of a pattern that is being shown by the models here is favorable for a storm to be sitting beneath this ridge. This ridge that we're seeing on the models here, it is favorable to have a storm down here, which is why one of the top analogs is one that has Allen moving across the northern Caribbean in here. So it's the kind of pattern that can favor a storm. It's the kind of thing that we will have to watch closely as this wave comes across. It is not a guarantee that it will even develop, but it should be watched as it comes west-northwest. It's not a guarantee that it will recur either or whether it will come west but there are hints that the pattern may allow it to come west and thus it should be watched closely in case it develops and causes a problem. We are getting towards that time of year when we're going to have to start looking to the source region out here for sending stuff our way and the kind of pattern I've been talking about that could develop starting in August could bring some of these things in close to land. The United States and the Northern Caribbean and the Bahamas could have to watch one of these features, perhaps this one. We'll be watching it as we head into next week. Alright, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.